Well, um, one thing about that the Dr. Um, asked me to share with you about the iPad training, uh, which is from time to time I still get asked by a lot of uh, uh, fellow Realtor. Uh, definitely, the the technology is, is the, the way that we're supposed to focus on, and it will make your life a lot easier. And with that, I, I will not hesitate to share with you. Uh, however, just talk to the board, and they will schedule me, and I believe it's going to be next year now. Uh, this too late to schedule for this year now. And uh, with that, I would urge everyone to take a look at it and really use it, utilize the technology. It really make your life simple. And instead of running around with all the paperwork, now you are, we support you all paperless. And like it or not, the um, uh, last time when we were at the uh, San Diego, they already go with 100% paperless pro as well, uh, which is already a few years late behind us. But we did that way of before everybody else. Right? Thank you. And Tom, committees that you've been involved in or currently involved in? Right. I just found out I was supposed to come up here a few couple minutes ago. So <laughs> I had everything prepared. But I am chairman of the Professional Arbitration and Professional Standards Committee of the board. And I'm sure most of you know about the committee. And hopefully you haven't been involved with it too much. But uh, we, uh, as you know, we have our code of ethics. And uh, uh, if anyone is... Uh, violates the code of ethics and somebody feels strongly about the fact that they did that, uh, they can file a, a, a grievance with the board and uh, the grievance committee, which is headed by Lorraine Clark, I don't know if she's here today, uh, Lorraine, uh, I think she's probably in New Orleans, I yes. suppose, mm -hmm. and um, uh, sh the, the charge would first go to the grievance committee and they decide if it's worthy to go before our committee for arbitration and professional standards. And then, uh, separately, the other side of it is if you have a money dispute with somebody in the board uh, where you, know, you felt that you earned the commission and they got the commission, you want to get it, some of it back or all of it back while you can file charges uh, uh, with the board in uh, a, an arbitration. And then we hear that. And, and the people on the, on the <laughs> committees, the panels, are people that are right here in this room. Some of the uh, panel members are here in this room who uh, serve on professional standards. And this is also a recruitment time. Uh, next year we need, we need a new panel. Now you can't just go right on to professional standards. There's only a couple people, I think, in the room here who are eligible to be on professional standards, and that is people who have served on grievance before. So uh, if you are interested in doing this, and it's really a, a worthwhile thing to do, you might consider uh, becoming a member of the Grievance Committee this next year, and then following year after that, you can be on the Professional Standards Committee. We'd like to get Ernie Henry uh, to be on the Professional Standards. I know he's qualified. And he's, he's a rare visitor here. Thank you for coming today, Ernie. And uh, so anyone else, though, that would like to be on next year, we, we welcome you, because those, those few of us that are on the panel and, uh, uh, you know, we really are, are getting overloaded with work, unfortunately. Last, last year, we had maybe two or three cases. Uh, this year, we've had already five or six, seven, and we may have more next year. It just depends on how the business is going, whether people are filing complaints and, and arbitration. So if you have some interest in it, I would re really encourage you to try and get involved with it next year. Uh, Tom, what, was, what would be the, the steps that they would take? Do they speak to someone in particular? Do they fill out any sort of paperwork? Yeah, step one is to basically contact Barbara. Everyone knows Barbara uh, Yelnick in the office. Uh, just contact Barbara and she will give you the form to fill out. Uh, just for example, if you, you uh, uh, say there's a, a house that uh, you showed, showed to somebody, you had a long relationship with these people, and nothing happened, and all of a sudden you look in the, in the uh, MLS sold uh, list and you find out this house sold two days after you showed it to these people and you weren't even involved in it, you had no idea that it sold. Well, you may well have a cause for a uh, professional stand or for an arbitration and uh, that I would encourage you to, if, if you feel justified file an arbitration agreements uh, against that person and then it will come to the to the arbitration but uh, uh, I've seen many cases where uh, you know I had one here not too long ago uh, not in our board here but this was an inner board between another board and ours 
uh, $50,000 went from one agent to the other agent. $50,000. And uh, because they, in fact, the other agent uh, uh, took advantage of the, one agent took advantage of the first agent, and uh, so he lost. And uh, I know some of the panels around the state have a tendency to, uh, as they say, split the baby, you know, say, well, we'll get half of this guy and half to that guy. But uh, my philosophy has been, and, and I think quite a few people uh, in, in uh, professional standards in the state feel that you're either right or you're wrong. There is no halfway. I mean, if you, you either did something right or did something wrong. So we rarely ever split the, the baby. But uh, I know the situation that I just got called on yesterday. One of my agents called me in Florida, and they told me that they had been on the listing, they had a listing that was a short sale, and it negotiated the short sale right up until approval, and then the client secretly uh, went and uh, listed with another with another agent. So I think it was during the time. So there's but because there's, like, there's sometimes when you 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 think you you know you're you're completely right, and you're not. You know, you you may not have a case. Uh, there's uh, you know there's sometimes it just works. To, against you, but uh, generally speaking, uh, it's, it's, if you have a case, certainly bring it forward. And incidentally, if you have a problem with a broker outside of our area, you go through CAR. CAR has an inner board arbitration, which I'm also a member of, of the, the panel, and uh, we, we are called to go into other areas and uh, uh, resolve a matter. I had one recently, a nearby board, where the, <laughs> the the board president was being uh, uh, charged with a, a violation of, uh, of uh, code of ethics, and so you know nobody in the board they couldn't hear it in their local board, so they brought in people from other boards around the case. And we did find that he was innocent, fortunately, uh, but uh, uh, that's that's one of the things that's done. So perfect. Now over to Vanessa. Vanessa is currently the co-chair, affiliate co-chair. But she has worked in the past with the special events uh, committee. Yes. And um, do you have to be an, uh, do you have to be a realtor or an affiliate or how does that work? Actually, the committee is made up of both realtor and affiliates, which is a great thing because then we collaborate so together. So yes, like Marcus said, I was affiliate. I'm affiliate co-chair this year, especially events co-chair or vice chair last year and the year before. And I think it really gave me an opportunity to get to know and serve all of you. Um, it was very rewarding, I think. You know, it, um, besides you know getting exposure, I really like to serve. You know, whether it's a church or you know just my family or here, it really gives me an opportunity to do more than just. Um, you know, sometimes some boards I hear they ask a lot for for money, and I know that this board has been really good to the affiliates and not wanting to put us too, too out there, you know, when times are tough. But it gives us an opportunity as an affiliate to just really serve and, and be, um, um, to give back to you. The, what are some of the events? That the, yeah, some of the events um, that we plan are uh, Chinese New Year, Cinco de Mayo, Halloween. I think in the past it was uh, the 4th of July uh, picnic. Um, and then what else we have um, one of the things I really like doing was uh, the Dodger game. That was a lot of fun for people. But um, you know, we this year it's Maria Howard and Lucia Tam. And I know that they need help. You know, I know sometimes we have your the chair and co-chair, but we need a committee. I think I want to reach out to all of you to if you're creative or you have you know you have some ideas or maybe you're a little bit bored with what we've been doing maybe you think you know we should change things up we need your your input um, we need to have a, a good committee that will you know that will um, just uh, give us some new out Looks, you know, invigoration. Yeah. That will invigorate us, you know. And um, to, to piggyback on what she's saying, you know, some people say, well, we come here for business. Well, you know what? We're also in real estate, and we have to learn to a certain degree how to be social. 
and we have to learn, you know, and we learn about other cultures through the events that we have here. You know, the, they have occasionally um, we'll have the culture night, which is a really fun, fun time. But it also opens up your world, it, you know, by being social. And we are in a social business, believe it or not. We have to learn how to talk to different people from different cultures and different in different situations. Uh, and so it's really important that we have these events so that we can mix with one another. It builds relationships, definitely. I think when you serve together, when you help each other, you know, when you show up, you know, a day or two early or, you know, two hours of set up for a breakdown, um, I think that it, it, it bonds you. So I would encourage you to join or if, even if you can't do every single event, even if you just want to do one, one event, maybe you were, um, you came to Chinese New Year and you thought, oh, you know, I'm, you know, it's not my culture. I need ideas. You know, <laughs> I need, I need to know what is, uh, you know, maybe kosher or maybe this shouldn't be here or we need to um, um, maybe have some more media involved or things like that. You know. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and next we go to William. William for uh, regards to YPN. Good morning, my name is William. I was chair of the Young Professionals Network last year. Currently, I'm the vice chair of the Education Committee. One reason we become realtors is because we want to see what we can do. In a job that's 100% commission-based, if you're your best, it really shows. In the case of education, we want all of our realtors, all of our members to be the best in the industry. Whether it's being the most ethical, the most professional, or the most specialized, we do our best to kind of give you guys what you ask for. The thing is, in terms of recent years, we haven't been getting that feedback from our members. So we would absolutely love for you guys to join the education committee. We'd absolutely love for you guys to tell us what courses you want to see, what designations and certifications you want. We'd be happy to work with you guys, to work alongside us in order to help you guys become better realtors. In terms of the Young Professionals Network, it's kind of a situation where it's hard to network with the other realtors in kind of non-professional settings. And then usually the way business is conducted is the relationships you build not in the field really translates to success in the field. So there's a case where I worked with the realtor recently on a transaction that I met through the Young Professionals Network. Because we had the relationship, he was able to trust me right from the moment we sent in our offer, and we were able to get our offer accepted without the counter. Because when I vouched for my client, that realtor is able to vouch to his client that my client was solid. So in terms of the Young Professionals Network, we're just basically trying to actively build relationships with you and other realtors, whether it's inside this association or other associations. But the odds are that these are going to be realtors you're going to work with throughout your business career. And we just want to kind of help you guys out. What about premature old people like me? <laughs> young and short gray old people like, am I welcome? Am I welcome to the young professionals? Are you young at heart? I'm young at heart. <laughs> I'm young at heart. <laughs> I just walked about pretty much the state of Florida with my parents. So I think I'm pretty young. I would, yes, I, I, because that, that, is the, that is the impression. But you know, the, uh, I'm sure that it takes all types of young souls to educate one another. And it's very true. At Young Professional Network, there's no age limit. It's not like once you hit a certain age, you know, we cut up your membership card. It's not how it works. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're 18, if you're 16, if you're 30, if you're 50, if you're 70, if you're 90. If you want to network, if you want to come out half and be social, if you want to learn better yourself, then we welcome you with open arms. And one last question, and this is, uh, I know as a board, Tom, as a board, we like to have good participation in, in the YPN. We encourage, uh, it, it is actually good for membership, is it not? Yeah, YPN is, is probably one of the, the, the most uh, active uh, associations in our board. They really put on a, a lot of good activities and uh, provide benefits for their members, so I would encourage anybody who's interested to, to get a hold of uh, the vice chair over here and uh, join. And last but surely not least, <laughs> Ms. Katayana. Katayana. That's good. <laughs> anyway, as you know, for the last year and a half, our committee has been working on a 5013C for this uh, association. It finally came through this month. So now, all of you can go out and ask for donations from your beauty shop, your restaurants, from your friends, from your dentists, 
from anyone to donate one of their services to our auction. And therefore, we can create more money for scholarships and charity. We have 15 schools that we write to for them to give us a student that is eligible for our uh, money. So every year we give out at least $7,000 to $10,000 in money to the scholarships. So we need to raise that during the year. So all of the donations that you get are really very, very helpful towards that, that goal. Uh, we give $500 to each student. And at Christmas time, we give $1,000 out to charities in this local area. And we're giving out five, uh, in a couple weeks, we're giving out 5,000. So we give out anywhere between 10 and 15,000 a year. So we have to raise 10 to 15,000. And uh, selling tickets, raffles, auctions, uh, the 50-50 drawing, uh, any donation to the Century Club, all goes towards this charity and the scholarships. So to make it easier, we thought that a 501c3 designation would help all of you get more donations from the outside rather than having you donate and then also purchase. So it, it really took a lot of work on our committee. Again, to follow up on all the other committees, we are lacking participation in the committee. And it, it's a, a, a very interesting committee because we have to make decisions on where to give the money and who to give the scholarships to and what, um, what type of uh, fundraisers we have. And so we need some input. We've had the same people on the committee probably for the last three years and we do need some new blood. And it used to be that the president would ask different people to belong to certain committees. But in the last few years, the presidents haven't done that. So therefore, there hasn't been any new blood brought into these committees because nobody is soliciting them. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm planning to join the, in the scholarship <laughs> committee uh, because of my background in, in education. So. And we have an auction coming up. Yeah, you know? next week we have an auction, and so we need some more donations for the auction. Yoli will be the auctioneer. So uh, we have very little right now, so we're hoping that everybody will bring something in. And now that we have the 501c3, we will have some slips up here for donors that you give with our, uh, our uh, ID number so that they can use this and take it to their CPA or their, or their tax preparer so they could use it as a tax deduction. So you can get those from Barbara, probably by next week we'll have them. So I want to also piggyback on, on um, seniors uh, talk about the grievance. I've been on the grievance committee for several years now. And even if you complain and you settle it between you, between you and, the, and who's complaining against you, and the grievance committee feels that there still is violations, the grievance committee can go against the person that they feel has committed the actions against the ethics committee. We're having one situation right now where we're doing that because we felt it was gross negligence on the broker's part and the complainant didn't want to come, didn't, he withdrew his complaint. So the grievance committee is going after that broker. So it doesn't just stop between the two people. It can be taken up to pro standards by the grievance committee. So that was just my little part. Perfect. And, and we also need more people on the grievance. The committees are really lacking. I think everybody that is up here has asked that you have some more participation and the participation really really helps our committees grow and helps us um, grow as a as an association perfect thank you i should say congratulations on getting the 5.13c that's absolutely amazing yeah it was. Congratulations. it's a it's a hefty amount of paperwork so now um briefly if there's any questions about any anything that we've heard here any questions about uh, what you, to any one of the committee or panel discussion uh, folks. 
All right, I do want to, hopefully, you have discovered a hidden talent of yours deep, kept deep inside, and hopefully this has uh, encouraged you to want to share that talent and therefore grow professionally from it. Thank you for your time, and thank you panel discussion uh, folks for your time. You did a great job, thank you very much.